Hello everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and my craft table. So today I want to give you a quick little, well, a relatively quick little video of uh, building a shadow box with layered cardstock that I have already cut out. And I've done a lot of the pre-work in order to keep the video short, but this is going to be an, a really cute Mother's Day present. And in the last video, we made a card to go with it using the same colors of cardstock. I'll link that video for you. Um, the supplies that you need for a shadow box are um, a shadow box frame. This is an eight by eight, and I did purchase this from Michaels. I've got a piece of black cardstock that I'm going to put over this brown backer. And then I've got five cardstock pieces of paper that I've actually already cut and weeded out. And these are from Concord and Ninth. In fact, I'll just show you because I don't have the colors memorized, but this cardstock is amazing. I can't even begin to tell you. I just, I can't. Um, Concord and Ninth, and this is their new 24 2024 color collection and we have creamsicle watermelon wild berry I skipped grasshopper for this particular project eucalyptus and rainforest so just the first three and the last two so those five this cardstock y'all is amazing so typically I would just use recollections which you can readily get at one um, Michaels or I'd pick up a packet at Hobby Lobby. You know, I've never really been too um, picky with my cardstock, but this cardstock is fantastic. So I think I'm going to reserve this cardstock for really special things and um, hoard the scraps, like seriously hoard the scraps. So um, try and get the most mileage out of the um, out of the cardstock. The other thing that you will need for this project is some, um, either some tape runner or glue, some 3D pop dots. You might need scissors and perhaps the measuring tape, but let's go ahead and go to design space. I want to show you where I got the design and kind of how I put it together super fast. It's already ready to go. And then we'll come back to the overhead camera and put this together. So in design space, I basically looked for a mandala horse and found this pattern. It came up in the images search or project search, and I thought it was so beautiful. So what I did is I went in and made several different um, copies of it so that I could play around with the layering of the colors. And what I mean by that is that it, I have five different colors and I wanted to make sure that the, the order in which these are cut is the best for the project. Let's pull this up here and you can, you'll see what I mean. So I made a shape. This represents the black cardstock and this is the one in particular that I'm keeping. And over here in my layers panel, I just labeled it 32154. And basically I had assigned a number to each of my cardstock colors. And this is the order in which this is being um, placed. So it actually says top layer, second to top, middle, second to bottom, bottom. And I actually had spent quite a bit of time um, when I first made it is um, I went through and let's see if I can get them to populate. I might have to zoom out. Oh, there we go. So this top one is the one that I'm using. And I really had like seven total designs. Um, let's see. There's another one, another, another. And then I, I texted my sister a picture of all of them together and I said, 
hey, which one do you think looks the best? Now, I already had my eye set on one in particular. And ironically, we both chose the same one. So this is basically, and you can see here in my layers panel, how I have like the order in which the cardstock is going from top to bottom. This did take a considerable amount of time, but to me, it was really important. So if you decide to do a layering project like this, where the colors could be interchangeable in the layers, this is an idea that could help you decide which one you like best. So that's what I did to get this put together. But this is the one I decided on. And when you put it behind, when you put it in front of the black cardstock, it just really pops. Okay, let's go to the overhead camera one more time and go ahead and start putting this together. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, first of all, I'm just really gonna set this aside and when we go to put this all together, I'm gonna use rubbing alcohol to clean both sides of the glass. But for right now, I'm just gonna set it aside. And um, here I have my black cardstock. I took the inside uh, border piece of the frame and I basically just kind of went around with a pencil super light just to make sure that I could line things up correctly because I want to put it into the frame all at one time and I already have my layers um, weeded out they are ready to go so I think this will make for quick work um, I think for the first layer that we probably need to decide exactly where it is going to go to make sure that it is centered. Um, and for the most part, it, it kind of is at an, an angle. So like this. Um, okay, let me do... Let me do um, some washi tape. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, on the back, I'm going to put some washi tape. And I think my camera, there we go. That's a little more square up for you. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of washi tape. I'm just going to put it on the back. And I'm going to put this in the corner, get this lined up really nice. So this is an 8 by 8 and I just cut it out of black cardstock that I had and I used the inside of the frame, laid it down here and just took my pencil and went around. And now I'm just gonna build, well, I kind of want to know where each layer is gonna go. And so I think it's gonna look like this. Now the question is, do we build it on the cardstock and go up, or do we build it and then place it? And so I think actually building it here um, might be best. Now I could make it a little more square like that. Actually, I think that looks really good. And before I commit to any glue anywhere, I'm going to measure so this is about 1.1, 1, 1. 1, 1. 1.2, and this is um, a little bit, it could come this way. Sorry about that. Got so much stuff in the way. Okay, so let's see. That is at 1.3. And that is at 1.3. And then I think at the top, um, I think at the top, really, it's okay. So let me double check one more time because I'm going to put tape runner on it. Well, I'm going to put it down here. Let's see. Like that. I don't want that to move. And then 
I'll do a little bit over here. A little bit over here. And before I put this one down over here. Okay. And then I'll do a little bit back in there. Okay, so my green layer is not going to go anywhere, okay? And that is definitely going to be in place. Now the dark green is going to lay on top like so. And so you'll see the green, the light green, showing up underneath there. Now this is where we want to start building dimension. And... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pop dots in these larger areas and then a few strategically around. I don't want it to sag, but I also need it to be so it'll look like this. We'll be up a little bit. I guess you can see the shadow. Okay, so I'm going to take care of that. got all of the adhesive dots um, unpapered and then I'm just going to come over here now this is going to require you know making sure that I am very very careful when I lay these down I think that's really good and um, it's just enough dimension to be able to see everything all right, the next layer, which is the, um, this is the wild berry. So on the bottom, we have eucalyptus. On this next layer is rainforest. And then we're going to have wild berry. And it's going to go like so, just like that. So we're going to repeat the same process, okay, where we just put the adhesive dots where we can to build up some dimension. And now that I think about it, so when I get toward the end, well, when I use up all of the dot portions, something that I like to do is I will cut this particular type of um, pop dots. I like to use the um, the foam that it's that they're inset in, and I actually will use these for bigger areas like this makes for really quick work um, so that's just and it stretches your materials I know some people would be like just put more dots and I tend to do that however this is a nice way to um, still have your dimension but at the same time you're stretching your supplies and this this goes faster to be honest with you and then when i'm all done with these then i'll have you know other foam tape and stuff that i'll break out but i wanted to use all of these up and make sure that oh that is going to be sticking out on the side there we go So what are, um, what are some things, a couple of things, a couple of questions. Number one, what are you doing for your mother and or your grandmother for Mother's Day? And what type of gifts do you like to give to them? And then what do if you're a mom what do you like to receive on mother's day or are you someone who is just like i just want to sleep i don't want any presents i just want to sleep somebody make me some lunch um, that kind of stuff and then also 
second question is, what do you like to do to stretch your craft supplies? Because let's be honest, craft supplies, um, it's not, um, it's not cheap. It's, it's expensive stuff. And we all know right now in this day and age that every little bit counts. So what are some things that you like to do to stretch your craft supplies? And just let me know the answer to those questions down in the comments. I'm genuinely interested and curious because, you know, I don't have all the answers. I know I have all the questions, but I don't have all the answers. Okay, so I'm just going to keep putting these little, we're getting into some smaller space, so I'll just go back to using the little dots and we'll get this red one ready to go. So I'm all adhesive up and we're going to get this third layer down. And there we go. I love this. This is becoming so beautiful. I love the dimension. I love the colors. Okay, so we have two more. We have eucalyptus on the bottom, rainforest, wild berry. Okay, this is watermelon. And then when we're done, we'll have creamsicle. Okay, so let me get the pop dots on these. Now, you'll notice that as we go up through the layers, there's less and less area for the pop dots and stuff. So I might have to get a little creative and um, cut them in half or something like that. So let me get these on and ready to go and then we'll place it down and go on to the next layer. Okay, we've got our watermelon layer ready and it is definitely getting mm, harder and harder, so to speak, to make sure that my um, 3D adhesive is not going to be visible um, from, from the, um, oh, I got some in there. And got something there. So you want to make sure that your adhesive dots are you know, that and or whatever you have, like you're cutting things super small. Imagine, I would say that probably is the longest part of this project. While the um, machine is cutting, you know, the cool part is, is you can do some things while the machine is cutting. And so that part takes a while with these intricate cuts. Also, I did use the intricate, or I used the cardstock intricate cut setting when I did the cutting out. Um, but um, that's funny. I have all these little things everywhere. Okay, so I think that looks good. And we've got one more layer, and I think this one is probably going to take me. Uh, a hot minute to get these little things, um, you know, ready with the 3D adhesive. So I'm going to do that off camera and come back in just a second when this is ready to lay down and it'll go like that and then we'll put the whole thing together. 
Okay, so that definitely, because these are so tiny, that definitely took, you know, a couple of minutes. So you do this type of project, make sure that you are, you know, binge watching something fun, um, having, you know, you have plenty of coffee. All right, I think I got all of them. And if not, well, there's plenty on there. Okay, so here is um, the last layer. So we have eucalyptus on the bottom. We have rainforest, then we have wild berry. This color is watermelon. And now for creamsicle. Oh, got a tab there. Okay, we're going to put this on. Making sure we get it. really nicely lined up I think got something right there let me grab my true control knife I think it's like a little fuzzy we'll take that off okay look at that that is so neat I love it and I love the dimension Oh, this is great. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set this aside and we're going to bring in this guy. Okay, this is the 8x8 shadow box from Michaels. And really, the only thing I want to do here on the inside. And I don't think I'm even going to handle this glass very much, but I want to clean the glass. And I'm just using some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel. And I'm just going to clean the inside so that we don't have any smudges. And then I'll clean the outside in just a minute. Tell you what. Being a crafter and using the isopropyl alcohol, it first of all, I just love it. I love how it cleans and I love how everything is nice and neat. Okay, this is going to go back in here like that, and then this now, yesterday. Actually, I think I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to lay this down. And I'm going to put this on top. Like that. All right, that was definitely easier than putting the roses together. And... Then we'll put, this is the top. I am very excited about this. All right. Now, I do notice that I probably could bring, I could probably actually cut off just barely down here. Let this come down just a hair so I actually did go in and trim off an eighth an eighth of an inch on the bottom and moved it to the top and I think this fits so much better in there so what an easy fix and this is just stunning I love it I'm tempted to make one just for myself too so this was our second Mother's Day gift and it did match the coordinating card that we already made in our previous video. So I wanted to share both of these with you. Hopefully you found this video inspiring and creative and helpful. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss future content. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for today and get my craft room cleaned up because it is a mess with all of the little glue um, 
the little pop dot little papers. So it's time to clean and then take a break from crafting for a little bit before we move on to our next project. And so please make sure that you call your mom or your grandma or both and let them know how much you love them and appreciate them. And I will see you in the next video. And in the meantime, enjoy a great cup of coffee and happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.